Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to give you a quick guide to art markers. I'm going to talk about the different types of markers that are out there. I'm going to talk about what they are good for, what they are not good for, so that um, I hope this can give you a good idea on whether to invest some money in markers or stay away from them. So here I have with me, these are the markers um, that I have bought over the years. I actually have a lot more markers, but in recent years, I have uh, shifted away from using markers and started using watercolors. So these are some of the markers that I, I have left with. So I'm going to start with um, introducing you to, I think, one of the more well-known markers, the Copic markers. Generally speaking, there are two types of markers, alcohol-based markers and water-based markers. For alcohol-based markers, they have that characteristic odor. They are mostly permanent. For water-based markers, they can be dissolved in water. They are water-soluble. So if you want uh, something that is permanent, you should always go for alcohol markers. So for Copic, they have different types of um, markers. So we have the Copic, the standard Copic marker which is sort of a squarish and blockish uh, shape. Then we have the Copic Sketch, which is an oval shape like this. And then there is the Copic Chow, which is a circular shape. So the main differences are between these three markers, besides the uh, shape of the marker is the tip that they have. So for the standard Copic marker, we have the standard chisel tip. The chisel tip is a very common type of tip for marker. So for the standard Copic marker, the Copic Sketch and the Copic Chow, they all have chisel tips. And many markers, they have tips on both sides. So let me show you the tips on this side. So for the Chow and the Sketch, we have the brush tips. And for the standard Copic marker, we have the fine tip. So these are the main differences in terms of the tips. And also in terms of the capacity of ink, this has the smallest volume. This uh, is somewhat in between and this has uh, the largest volume. You should always remember to put the cap back onto the marker when you are not using them because markers, they dry out quite easily, especially alcohol-based markers. If you put them out in the open like this, they can dry out in a few hours and these markers, they are not cheap, so when they dry out, they no longer can be used. You have to get a new one, and that's a waste of money. To cut down the cost of using markers, it's good to find markers that come with refillable ink. So for Copic, their refillable inks are called Virus Ink. So we have this um, W5 here. This is used to refill this marker, which is also W5. This is a warm gray marker. So to refill markers, you typically just open the marker up like this. For Copic markers, you just have to put drops of ink onto the tips and let the ink flow down. Once the tip can no longer absorb any more ink, that's when you know you have a juicy marker. The marker is well refilled. For some other marker brands, you can actually just uh, twist open the top. But for Copics, you have to uh, put drops onto the tips. With ink refills like this, it makes it much more economical to use markers. If not, once you finish using the marker, you have to throw it away. And it's expensive, it's also not very environmentally friendly. So I do highly recommend you get uh, markers that come with refillable inks. Now, Copic markers, they are um, a bit cheaper if you get them in Japan, but for those who are not in Japan, you can buy them online they are a bit more expensive. So um, having the refill really cuts down the cost of using these markers. One of the main advantages of using markers is the convenience they provide. They are very portable, very easy to bring around, and the ink dry very fast, so they are quick to use. There was a time when I like to use markers while drawing on public transport. So I would draw a sketch, something like this, and I would color the sketch on the spot while standing in the train um, using my markers. It is so convenient to use markers to color. 
so I can color large areas really quickly compared to using um, colored pencil for example for tiny areas like this I can use the brush tip to paint into those areas markers can be very precise when you use the brush tip you definitely have more control when using markers I'm back to using the chisel tip markers allow you to work really fast so you want that fast and sketchy look markers can be a good uh, tool to use the downside to using markers is each marker is only one color so if you need to switch colors you have to switch markers so I want this um, side here to be a bit lighter so, so I have to switch to a lighter color I'm using warm gray markers by the way so now I'm using a lighter warm gray so for every color that you need you have to switch and if you want to get a lot of colors it's going to be very expensive so that is one um, downside to markers each marker is only one color you can overlay the marker ink using a few more layers to get a darker shade if you do not want to use a another marker but um, this is actually quite limited so I'm using a warm gray number three here and this is the darkest shade I can get to get it to be a bit more uh, to get it to be darker I actually have to switch to a darker marker so this is a warm five and immediately uh, you can see that this is a darker shade so you do need to have several markers in order to get the variation of tones the brush tip allows a bit more flexibility in coloring while the chisel tip allows you to color much faster and the chisel tip will also give you a very blockish shape for the fine tip you can use it for drawing or getting really thick lines another thing to note when using markers is it's always good to test them out before you use them on actual artworks for example here I have a pen and ink sketch I'm using marker over the ink I do not know if the ink is really uh, permanent so sometimes when you use markers over inks uh, the ink may actually sort of smear a bit or dissolve so be sure to test out the markers before using them on actual artworks you can buy markers individually like this or you can get them in sets like this and if you buy them in sets like this each marker is usually slightly cheaper than buying individually however the downside of buying sets like this is the colors are already chosen for you so depending on the subject that you want to color some of the colors may not um, be suitable so that's um, the downside of sets but um, it's a good way to try out markers because they are usually slightly cheaper per marker so um, let's use some of the colors again to color this sketch this is a Shinhan touch marker it has a brush tip on this end and a chisel tip on the other end Shinhan also sells markers with the fine tip so the color that I'm using is YR25 Salmon Pink Markers usually have very funky color names This is a bit orangey in color The colors that I have in this set is pastel light colors So the colors are light, they are not dark so if I need darker colors then I will need to buy more colors so that's the downside as mentioned earlier when it comes to coloring for example here let's say this is a blue sweater I could have colored everything blue and use a darker shade of blue to color the shadow areas or I can just leave the highlighted areas in white and color and color the shadow areas in blue 
The advantages of doing this is I can just use one color if I need to color everything in blue and add another shade. Well, um, let's try and see what happens if I go over with another shade. The color will be a bit more saturated, but it's not. Um, it does not look like it's in shadow. The illusion, of, the illusion of shadow is provided by this uh, white area here. Marker inks are usually not light fast, that means they can fade with time. So unless otherwise specified, you can assume that inks like this, inks from markers like this, they are not light fast and can fade. And here I have with me a Sharpie marker. This is also an alcohol-based marker. And this is really tight. Even though this marker has a really fine tip, this is still considered a marker. Sharpie comes with a lot of different points, extra fine point. They also have chisel tips, broad tips, and a whole lot of other tips. And this is a set of Ecoline brush pens. They are sort of like markers as well because, well, take a look at the tip. I would say this is still a marker because it still uses a felt tip even though it's shaped like a brush tip. With brush tips you can sort of get strokes that mimic real brushes so you can get, you can get thin and thick lines. So if you want to get thicker lines you can just press down a bit harder. Now the ink in this is different from alcohol based ink. This is water-based ink. With water-based ink, when you apply water over the ink, it's going to dissolve the ink. Some types of ink are more soluble compared to others. So again, before you use it on actual artworks, be sure to test them out. This is the ink that is used inside that brush pan. So here it says it's liquid watercolor can be used on paper, cardboard, can be used in airbrush, brush and technical drawing pen. So this ink is actually quite um, similar to those fountain pen inks. So if you have inks like this or maybe the marker refillable inks, you can also make your own markers. You just have to buy an empty marker. Here I have with me is a Dela Rowley FW mixed media marker. This is a felt tip marker so you can just Open this up, pour the ink inside, and you can make your own marker with your own colors. Water-based inks that are used in markers like this are not light fast, so the colors can fade as well. Here's another water-based marker. This is the Winsor Newton watercolor marker. The difference between this marker versus the Copic or the Shinhan marker is the ink that is used inside this marker is pigment-based. Pigments are tiny little particles, physical particles that um, produce the colors. So when you have those particles dissolve in water and put inside a marker like this, those particles, they are more light resistant. They are more light fast. So the colors in markers like this, they are more resistant to fading compared to alcohol based markers. So if you want ink that is more permanent, you can check out uh, Winston Newton watercolor marker or the pigment markers that they make. Since these markers are water-based, you can use watercolor techniques with this marker. So right now I am wetting the paper before I use the marker to see what kind of effect I can get. This is the brush tip and let me show you the other tip. This is the fine point tip. So I'm going to use the brush tip and see if I can get the colors to sort of blend or to spread out. So with water color, when you apply wet on wet, colors can sort of spread out. But here it does not look like it is spreading out. The colors here, they are very intense. So. Um, I think this behaves more like a marker than watercolor. All right, maybe I need to use real watercolor paper. The paper that I was using earlier is Bristol Bot paper, which is a very smooth paper. 
that is great for use with markers. So with watercolor paper, it seems that I can see some dispersion. The ink is sort of spreading out. You ever see the ink moving out? I can apply a bit more ink. So, so I can get some sort of gradation. You definitely need more practice when using um, these uh, Winsor & Newton watercolor markers because they behave so differently compared to alcohol-based markers. The paper that you use for markers definitely matters a lot because alcohol-based markers, they can bleed through the paper and go over to the other side. Water-based markers, they are relatively safe, they do not bleed over to the other side. So um, let's take a look at the other side. So this is the alcohol-based ink from Copic. This is from the Shinhan marker. This is 180 GSM Bristol board paper and at 180 GSM, the ink can still bleed over. Even at 300 GSM, sometimes the ink still bleeds over because um, the marker can be really juicy, really wet, and the ink can go, can soak the paper very easily. But for water-based markers like this, no problem at all. With markers, you can actually overlay onto uh, colors that you have already applied onto the paper to get additional colors. So um, let's try that out. Let's try and create a green with yellow and blue. So I have yellow here. So this is yellow and let's go over the yellow with blue. So this is blue and here you see the green. Water-based markers, they do not dry as fast compared to alcohol-based markers. So it gives you that little extra time to work with color blending. For the wheels here, I want to use this tip, this fine tip to draw them. And now let's check out these markers that are made by Spectrum Noir. They are metallic markers. These are quite interesting markers to me because I usually associate markers with metallic colors, um, with those that, um, that can be shaken, like they have a ball bearing inside and when you shake them, you can um, sort of draw them. I think those are acrylic markers, but this is a bit special. These are actually markers with water-based inks and are acid-free and archival, so not all water-based inks are non-archival. Some of them are actually archival and fade-proof. So let's test this out. Let's give this lady some golden hairdo. All right, these are pretty nice. I would expect water-based inks to be transparent, but as you can see, I'm able to cover the black lines by drawing over them. So these markers, they are opaque and they are very opaque. These metallic markers are really cool. I will put out a full review for them soon. Two things I don't like, they roll on the table too easily so they can very easily roll off the table and there is no way to cap it on the back. So that's a minor inconvenience. Here are a few more archival markers. These are made by Winston & Newton. They are pigment markers. These are supposed to be light fast and these markers, they actually have pigment information on the label, unlike all the other markers. Having pigment information is good because it lets you know exactly what sort of pigments are used to create that color. In terms of usage, these markers are not very different compared to the other markers I've shown you earlier. So that's all for today's quick guide on markers. We have talked about alcohol markers, we talked about the refills, we talked about water-based markers, water-based markers that are not light fast and can fade, water-based markers that are light fast and archival, markers that you can make yourself. 
there are too many markers out there in the market um, if you want to buy them make sure you check out the contents to find out whether or not they are light fast archival the type of ink that is used whether or not they can be refilled because that's going to save you a lot of money and also the range of colors that are available some markers are only available with a limited number of colors but some can go up to over 100 over colors if there are too many colors um, if you need to buy the the colors sometimes it can get a bit expensive and that's one of the main reasons why I switched away from using markers because to get let's say a purple I would need uh, to buy a purple if I'm using watercolor I can mix purple with red and blue so for markers you have to buy that exact color that you want and that's all I have for you today if you like to use markers, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. By the way, if you want to check out the reviews for these markers, I have some reviews on my blog. Just visit the link in the video description below. I hope this video is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.